Hi friends, I'm Fred Holliday with Atlas Van Lines here in Fredericton, New Brunswick today, speaking with one of our best crews in the country about providing an excellent quality of service. These people get some of the highest ratings in the country, and I wanted to find out why and how we can do that and emulate that right across the country for all of our customers. The high ratings coming back from customers because of uh, the way we pad, we make sure everything's covered. Uh, Customers have told me before many times that they've moved with other moving companies and they've said, well, this moving company didn't pad our furniture up like this. And I said, well, all moving companies don't work the same. Everybody pads differently. Uh, if everything's covered properly, no wood showing, there should be no problem, there should be no damage. And the customer is quite happy to see their furniture is being taken care of and well wrapped and uh, carried out properly. You show them that you know what you're doing, uh, that you know how to do it, and you want to do it is a big thing. Don't go in there looking like it's a job. If you act like it's a job, then it's gonna rub off on people. If you show that you're enjoying what you're doing, then they're gonna, that's, that's the ultimate tip. You show you enjoy what you're doing, it sets the customer at ease, I think. The main thing is to treat them with respect, uh, not to rush. If uh, they have any questions or issues, to come to me first. Um, at the, probably the first hour of the job, I'll show them uh, wrapping techniques. If you can't carry it, don't worry about it. We've got equipment, dollies, we can, we'll get it out of the house somehow. Just make, just, you have to make them feel comfortable. You can't yell at them. You can't bark at them. Um, and again, just treat them with respect. To me, if they want to learn, they're going to pay attention, right? And most kids that we do to get, they're, they don't really want to learn. They just want to do the job and that's it. But there's a lot more just doing the job. It's got to be done properly. And if you don't do it right the first time, what's the sense of doing it? Upon my arrival to the house, I uh, usually leave the truck out on the street first thing. I'll go in, I'll introduce myself to the customer, I'll, uh, I'll check the driveway, I check for power lines. Anything that may be an issue, I bring to the customer's attention. Uh, once I get into the house, I get him to do the walkthrough. I check for marks on floors, uh, walls, chips, bangs, Scratches on the hardwood floor, uh, indents, uh, you get a lot of that on hardwood floor and a lot of times customers don't see that and then you point it out to them and that protects you before you even start taking a piece of furniture out of the house. And then if you see any damages on the walls, you point it out to them, door casings, doors, anything like that. And if there's a, a, a hole in the in a wall, you point that out to them. And that way they're, it doesn't come back on to you at the end of the day or halfway through the day that, well, you did this. Well, we've already pointed that out to you. We did not do that. So, and once you point stuff out to them and the customer does not, did not know that it was there, they appreciate it that it's being pointed out to them. So, and they're quite happy with that. Uh, the process for tagging and listing a government shipment, um, I go into the house, when I'm in there, I'll take the inventories, I explain them completely to the customer. Um, I'm going to let him know that if I see anything out of the ordinary, it's going to be brought to his attention. For marks, scratches, cracks, bangs, anything like this, I, uh, as long as the customer, you're up front with the customer and the customer knows that you're a professional at this, you won't have an issue. Now, one of the main aspects that you have to remember in the process of completing a federal government inventory is, believe it or not, communications. The, the key is that the government doesn't want you to exceed 110% of handwritten conditioned items. So if you're running into a situation with that, and I'm not speaking about uh, bases for TVs or legs for tables or leaves for tables. I'm talking specifically where additional furniture is being added. You have to communicate to the office right away. 
So make sure you are communicating to us because we can prevent that shortfall and get to the actual um, government base to ensure that the exception is noted and we're protected. If, it's, if I feel that it's going to be over that, I will make a call to the office. Um, I've been doing it a long time, so I have a general idea when I walk in that house whether the estimate's going to be close to the estimate or it's going to be way under or way over. Uh, communication with the office, that's, uh, that's the number one key there. It's going to uh, save on penalties um, and anything else that there's going to be an issue with. Making sure everything that's on the inventory is actually in that room. And uh, if I have to go tag something in a basement that was moved from, say, the master bedroom, like a little chair or something like that, we always make sure you ask the customer first so we don't have to put a void on, on the listings. Uh, when I get to the home, you got to look at it. You look at everything. You look at the driveway first off. You don't want to back it in on a freshly paved driveway and tearing that up because they get expensive to replace. But I mean, if it's something like that, we we'll put plywood down where the tires are going to turn, uh, where it's going to sit. Uh, if you do have to go over the lawn, which you don't want to most times, but if you do, we, we lay plywood out on that first. When you get into the house, you lay your runners out, pad up the railings, a ceramic tile entryways. We got little pieces of plywood we put over top of that. If it's real light carpeting, we'll lay uh, pads underneath the runner. Ask the customer if they have any concerns or issues or anything like that. You put runners on stairs and sometimes you have to put a little bit of tape down on the runner so the runner does not come off the stairs and the tape doesn't hurt the stairs at all. It don't take the finish off or anything like that. As long as it's covered and the customer sees that, they're happy. I want you to remember that all that we're talking about and some of the um, tips you're going to hear from our experts uh, here at uh, Premier Van Lines is all listed on your visor card, uh, which you see in front of you right now. And it does talk about the most important things about federal government scaling. One, one thing I do want you to remember in all of this is if in doubt, communicate, call somebody. It's all a matter of making sure you remain in contact with us. First of all, make sure it's a government approved scale, which you're going to get from the origin agent dispatch in the morning. Make sure you're following the instructions to do it correctly. And if you're, you're just the least bit nervous about doing it correctly, call somebody and we'll help you through the process. We want to make sure it's done correctly. Well, we make sure it's a government scale and we get that information from our boss or the other agent that we're dealing with on a delivery. You've got to fuel up before you scale. Any, anything when you get to the scale, especially in the winter months, uh, snow, ice, anything like this that might be an issue, you have to let the office know. To ensure a proper scale ticket is everybody out of the truck, scale ticket signed all the information on it, uh, customer's name, registration number, and uh, scale master signature, I'd say, would be uh, the uh, ingredients for a perfect scale ticket, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs>